This le lesson will help you to understand one introduction to oligopoly with formal or tacit agreement, two cartel aiming at joint profit maximization and market sharing cartel. Also, we'll see non-price competition and output quotas for market sharing cartel. And then we'll try to look at some of the drawbacks in cartels. Interdependence, price wars and cutthroat competition are regular phenomena of oligopolistic firms. Thus, firms enter into agreement of uniform price output policy with the intention of evading uncertainty arising out of such interdependence, price war and cutthroat competition. Firms generally enter into either formal or tacit agreement. While formal agreements are taken on openly, tacit agreements are taken on secretly. In most of the countries, formal or open agreements are illegal and as a result, tacit or secret agreements play an important role among the oligopolistic firms. The formal or tacit agreements are known as collusive agreements to the economist and for them collusive oligopoly prevails in the market when the oligopolistic firms enter into such agreements. In the case of such collusive oligopoly, the competing firms collude in order to reduce the uncertainties arising out of the inherent rivalries among them. Bound by agreements, the colluding firms try to maximize the joint profit of the group. The best example of such type of collusion is the organization of petroleum exporting countries which is often called OPEC. Considering behavior of firms regarding price and output, such kind of collusions can be divided into two types. One, cartels. Two, price leadership. In this module, we shall discuss the price and output behavior of the cartels. The term cartel was earlier used by business firms for agreement where a common sales agency was formed by them to undertake the business operations of all the participating firms. Nowadays, cartel represents formal or tacit agreement among the oligopolistic firms of an industry. Cartel formation is treated as illegal in some countries as per their laws. For example, under antitrust laws, the formation of a cartel is illegal in United States of America. There are various forms of formal or tacit collusion or agreement adopted by oligopolistists under the coordination of central administrative agency called cartel. Generally, cartels are formed among the firms due to the uncertainty arising out of mutual interdependence. Broadly, cartels are divided into two types. One, cartels aiming at joint profit maximization and two, market sharing cartel. Cartels which are collusion at joint be profit in maximization. Extreme form when the participating firms consent to surrender their price and output determination rights to a central administrative agency 
in order to receive maximum joint profits. This kind of formal collusion is known as perfect cartel, where price and output of the industry and participating firms is determined by the central agency in order to get maximum joint profits for the members. In a cartel, the total profit is not distributed among the members as per the proportion of their output quota that they supply and the cost they incur. They get their share of total profit as per the pre-accepted agreement made between them. In order to minimize the total cost of total output produce, the central administrative agency decides the output quota to be produced by each firm. Perfect cartels working and operation style is very similar to the working and operation style of multiple plant monopolists. Under a perfect cart cartel, output to be produced and price to be charged by each firm is decided by the central authority. Thus, the task of the central authority is to decide how much output each firm in a cartel will produce so that the total cost will be minimum. Total cost will be minimized at the level of output where the marginal cost of each firm will be equal. If the marginal costs of the firms are unequal, then at a smaller cost, the marginal product can be produced by some firms. Thus, each firm will be allocated the output to produce at the point where their respective marginal costs will be equal to each other. Figure 1 shows how the cartel works in determining price and output in order to maximize joint profits of the oligoplastic firms. Let us assume that there are two firms, firm A and B have formed a cartel by entering into an agreement. Here, the objective of cartel is to maximize the joint profits of the member firms. Now, the job of the cartel is to estimate the demand curve of the industry's product and to decide which firm will produce how much of the total output. The demand curve that a cartel faces is the aggregate demand curve of the consumers of the product which slopes downwards from left to right as, in, as is shown by the curve DD in figure 1C. Marginal revenue that is MR curve of the cartel is the addition to its revenue as a result of additions to its output and sales. The marginal revenue curve just like monopoly will position halfway between the demand curve DD and Y axis. In figure 1, the cartel's marginal cost curve that is MCC is a horizontal addition of the marginal cost curves of firm A and firm B. Thus, in figure 1C, MCC curve so obtained is a horizontal addition of marginal cost curves that is MCA and marginal cost of firm B that is MCB of firms A and B respectively. The marginal cost curve that is MCC of cartel which is obtained by adding horizontally the marginal cost curves of the two firms, firm A 
and firm B indicates the output at which the total cost is minimum. Thus, the cartel can distribute the output to be produced among the firm A and firm B in such a way that their marginal costs are equal. The point at which MR and MC curves of the cartel intersect each other is the output at which the cartel maximizes its profit. In figure 1c, marginal revenue and marginal cost curves of the cartel intersect each other at point R, where output OQ is produced. The demand curve DD of the cartel at output OQ determines price that is P into P is equal to QL is equal to OP. Now the cartel will allocate total output OQ among both the firms to be produced in such a way that their marginal cost will be the same. A horizontal straight line from point R towards Y axis will possibly intersect each MC of both firm A and firm B to determine the respective output quota. Figure 1 shows that both MC will be equal to each other that is MCA is equal to MCB when firm A and firm B produce OQ1 and OQ2 output respectively. Thus, for firm A and firm B, the output quota is fixed at OQ1 and OQ2 respectively. It is observed from figure 1 that the total output OQ is equal to sum of OQ1 and OQ2 that is OQ is equal to OQ1 plus OQ2. The joint profit of two firms with the formation of a cartel is thus maximized where total output OQ produced is allocated among both firms to produce output of OQ1 and OQ2 respectively. Figure 1a shows that firm A earns a profit equal to K, P, F, T with output OQ1 and cartel price OP and firm B earn profit equal to H, P, E, G with output OQ2 and cartel price OP. Under the given demand and cost conditions, the joint profits earned by the cartel through both firms is maximized by equating MCC with MRC. In figure 1, the cartel follows cost maximization principle, not profit distribution principle, in order to allocate output quota to both firm A and firm market sharing cartels. In the real world, the type of perfect cartel just explained above has been observed rarely. Not only the output but also the price to be charged is decided by a central authority and profits are distributed among all the participating members according to the tacit or formal agreement made previously in a perfect cartel. However, the work and operation style is different when cartels are loose, not perfect. In case of loose cartel, the allocation of output quota and fixation of price of member firms 
are not similar just like they are determined in perfect cartel the market sharing by firms is a regular phenomena in a loose cartel thus in the case of loose cartel the market sharing is mostly categorized into two parts one non price competition and two output quotas non price competition the participating members of cartel under market sharing by non price competition are free to produce and sell any amount of output at uniform price that maximizes their individual profits they are free to change the shape and the size of their product and are also free to advertise and promote sales of their products given the uniform price the member firms compete on non price basis in case of occurrence of identical costs of the participating member firms the previously agreed uniform price will be the price just like the price of a monopoly firm ensuring joint profit maximization similarly in case of occurrence of differences in the costs of participating member firms the price will be fixed by bargaining between them the level of price will be decided in such a way that at least the high cost firms will get some profit however a loose cartel under such price fixation as per the cost differences is not stable because of cutthroat competition among participating firms because the low cost firms in this case have the advantage of price cutting in order to increase profit by attracting more consumers and therefore will break away from the cartel these low cost firms don't charge low price openly giving secret price concessions to the consumers these firms cheat other member firms the rivals gradually get to know about this and follow the same procedure when they lose their customers and as a result open price wars start forcing the cartel to break down the output quotas in some situations oligopolistic firms make tacit or formal agreement to produce output based upon their previously decided quota and sell them at agreed price this is another kind of market sharing cartel where the entire market is divided between participating members based upon their quota of output to be produced and sold at some agreed price in this case market sharing depends upon two possible situations one identical cost condition with homogeneous product and two cost differences many times the member firm produce homogeneous product and the cost of production is more or less same or identical thus firms producing homogeneous product with identical cost conditions will have advantage of monopolizing the market with equal share and in such case they will have the incentive to maximize their joint profit thus in this case each member firm will have equal quota of the market that is the entire market is divided equally for all the participating firms moreover in case of prevalence of cost differences the entire market 
will be divided unequally based upon the cost conditions and the quota of producing output will be different. Thus, different quotas for each member firm will be fixed because of their cost differences in producing the output, which will mean different or unequal market shares. In cost difference cases, each member firm will bargain to get their quota and market share. Thus, the quotas and market shares of each member firm will be decided based upon their achievements in the market. The achievement in the market of the firms depends upon their two criteria such as 1. The past level of sales and 2. The productive capacity of the firm. These in turn depend upon the firm's bargaining power. Sometimes the output quota of the member firms depends upon their geographical location. In order to decide the quota, the entire market is divided region wise. However, the geographical division of market between the member firms led to different prices charged and heterogeneous product produced by the firms. Empirical evidence suggests that cost differences lead to insecurity of cartel and collapse of collusive agreement. Hence, all types of collusion and cartels are unstable if cost differences prevail between the member firms. Cost differences lead to price war and cutthroat competition as the low cost firms have the incentive to reduce price of the product in order to maximize their profits and as a result collusive agreement collapses. Among many factors, free entry of the firm play a major role in the instability of the cartel. Thus, if there exists free entry of the firms in the oligopolistic industry, then collusion would not be limited to few firms and the instability of the cartel is increased multiple times. The new entrants, instead of joining the cartel, will start a price war by fixing lower prices in order to sell large quantities of their product. The price war between the cartel firms and the new entrants lead to instability of the cartel. Thus, maintaining a cartel is more difficult task than actually forming one drawbacks of the cartel. Problem is explained in figure 2. In figure 2, let us suppose that cartel decided the price PR to prevail in the market. The price which is fixed at PR is observed to be higher than the price that should prevail under oligopolistic competition. A cartel makes this price sustainable if all participating firms follow the output quota rule and allow them to produce a limited quantity, which is less than what they would have produced if they were producing in oligopolistic competition. In figure 2, let us assume this quantity as YR. Thus, at quantity YR, under cartelization, total revenue of this member firm is equal to area O, Y, R, C, P, R. Total cost of this member firm is the area O, Y, R, B, A under marginal cost curve. That is now total profit of this member firm 
is equal to area O by R C P R minus area O by R B A. Thus, the original situation in this cartel is that the member firms are charging the price P R and Y R is a limited quantity of output that each member firm is producing. It has been observed from figure 2 that given the price PR, there is a possibility for our particular firm that it increases output up to YC to make higher profit because throughout the output range O to YC, the price which is equal to marginal revenue exceeds marginal cost and MR is equal to MC at output YC giving maximum profit to member firm. Figure 2 shows that at output level YC total revenue of this member firm is equal to area O YC D PR total cost of this member firm is the area O Y C D A under marginal cost curve that is now total profit of this firm is equal to area O Y C D P R minus area O Y C D A which is equal to area A D P R. Thus at output level Y C our particular firm's profit will be equal to A D P R which exceeds original profit A B C P R by the area B D C. This member firm takes the advantage of breaking the Carter rule in order to overproduce and make greater profits. Then market price will start declining due to more supply by the cheater firm. The other honest member firms will come to know about it as it will be difficult for them to sell their quota of output at the given market price. The cheater firm may not always be identified but the honest member firms infer that someone in the group has broken the rule. Thus, the consequence of this cheating is that the cartel collapses and the industry will come back to oligopolistic competition. The implication of this cheating case is that the cheater firm only gains in the short run and suffers losses in the long run. Now it is up to the honor firm that how they behave after knowing that someone has cheated. In this case, the firms should value the future and trust each other very much in order to prevent themselves of cheating by any other firm. Otherwise, cheating is an inherent problem leading to instability and collapse of any cartel. This is the reason that existence of a cartel for a long stretch of time is rarely seen in the real world. The best example is OPEC which also faces problems from time to time. In some situation the joint profit maximization of cartel may not be possible. Some of the possible reasons are 1. Delay in tacit or formal agreement among the member firms or wrong prediction of the market demand or rigidity of the tacitly or formally agreed price or wrong prediction of the marginal cost curves or interference of the government 
and sometimes allowing high cost firms into the group. Let's summarize. Firms form cartels and enter into agreement of uniform price output policy with the intention of evading uncertainty arising out of interdependence, price war and cutthroat competition. In an oligopolistic market, while formal agreements are taken on openly, tacit agreements are taken on secretly. In case of collusive oligopoly, the competing firms collude in order to reduce the uncertainties cropping out of the inherent rivalries among them. Bound by agreements, the colluding firms try to maximize the joint profit of the group. Considering behavior of firms regarding price and output collusions are divided into two main types of cartels and price leadership. A cartel represents formal or tacit agreements among the oligopolistic firms of an industry. Broadly, cartels are divided into two types. Cartels aiming at joint profit maximization and market sharing cartel. The collusion will be in extreme form when the participating firms consent to surrender their price and output determination rights to a central administrative agency in order to receive maximum joint profits. This kind of formal collusion is known as a perfect cartel. Member firms in a cartel get their share of total profit as per the pre-accepted agreement made between them. In order to minimize the total cost of total output produced, the central administrative agency decides the output quota to be produced by each firm. Under a perfect cartel, output to be produced and price to be charged by each firm is decided by the central authority. The work and operation style is different when cartels are loose, not perfect. In case of a loose cartel, the allocation of output quota and fixation of price of member firms are not similar, just like they are determined in a perfect cartel. In case of a loose cartel, the market sharing is mostly categorized into non-price competition and output quotas. The participating members of the cartel under market sharing by non-price competition are free to produce and sell any amount of output at a uniform price that maximizes their individual profits. Given the uniform price, the member firms compete on non-price basis. In case of occurrence of identical cost of the participating member firms, the previously agreed uniform price will be the price just like the price of a monopoly firm ensuring joint profit maximization. Similarly, in case of occurrence of differences in costs of participating member firms, the price will be fixed by bargaining between them. The level of price will be decided in such a way that at least the high cost firms will get some profits. Another kind of market sharing cartel is the output quota where the entire market is divided between participating members 
based upon the quota of output to be produced and sold at some agreed price. In this case, market sharing depends on two possible situations. One, identical cost condition with homogeneous product and cost differences. Firms producing homogeneous product with identical cost condition will have advantage of monopolizing the market with equal share and in such cases they will have the incentive to maximize their joint profit. In this case each member firm has an equal quota of market that is the entire market is divided equally for all the participating firms. However, in case of prevalence of cost differences, the entire market will be divided unequally based upon their cost condition and their quota of producing output will be different. In this case, each member firm will bargain to get their quota and market share. In some situations, the joint profit maximization of cartel may not be possible because there may be delay in tacit or formal agreement among the member firms and wrong predictions of the market demand.